Radhe Radhe, today is Saturday, 11th March, 2023, presenting this recap video for today's Bhagavad Gita study session that's for the continuing journey of Chapter 7. Here with me is Mummy. Radhe Radhe. Go ahead and bring up the screen and see that we covered Chapter 7, verse 5 today. Um, as always, of course, after a few quiz questions, a couple more than normal. So hopefully everyone can uh, go back and revisit that material as well. Plenty to learn as a recap of last time's content, chapter 7, verses 3 and 4. Chapter 7, verse 5, then for today, we look at the recitation. We'll hear that first and then get into some explanation. Chapter 7, verse 5. Apareyam itastvanya prakritim vidhi me para jiva bhuta maha baho yayedam dharyate jagat. So, chapter 7, verse 5, um, going to the catchphrase first sun and sunlight. As we mentioned in class, and as you'll see in the next couple of minutes as well, this is a concept we've hopefully heard in several other lectures by Swamiji or Maharajji as well. And it really introduces us today to that whole idea of recognizing God and the souls as the energetic and the energy. So we learned a new term today from Sri Krishna himself in chapter 7, verse 5, called Jeev Shakti. That's also known as the soul energy. And Sri Krishna says two things. That A, it is a superior energy of his. Previously, we covered Prakriti, material energy. So specifically last time, we talked about those eight components of material energy. And we also reviewed them in the quiz questions today. The five gross elements and then the mind, the intellect, and the ego. As Sri Krishna says here at the start of chapter 7, verse 5, that is his inferior energy. So we are blessed, in fact, to be part of this superior energy, Jiva Shakti, the soul energy that encapsulates or embodies all souls, which are, as Sri Krishna says, the basis of life in this world. With regards to the commentary, the explanation itself, it's extremely long, but the crux that we all got from class and by reading this and watching the next few minutes as well, hopefully, is that Again, looking at everything from a single point of view of the energetic and the energy helps us recognize that there's only one, so to say, school of thought or sampradaya, as we saw in class, that is God's sampradaya himself, itself, that helps us see that at the same time, simultaneously, there are different entities, so God and souls, yet because of the concept of energetic and energy, they are also the same. And so as we saw through the development of the commentary paragraphs, we were able to land at, you know, Bhakti Shatak, verse 42 from Sri Maharajji, that encapsulates that idea in that one verse itself. So to build it up slowly, we of course understand now there's this concept of Jeev Shakti, the soul energy. We talked about Prakriti and material energy. And then Swamiji helps us go through kind of refuting the ideas of two major schools of thought or philosophy. There is the non-dualist school of thought. So dual, talking about two, non, the opposite perhaps, so singular. So here, those are the people who think that the soul and God are identical. They are the same. But it's very easy to see that that cannot be correct because of, you know, four questions and more that Swamiji presents here in the commentary. If we as souls were equivalent to God, we were identical, we were the same. Why are we overpowered by Maya? Why are we not omnipotent, all-powerful? Why do we have ignorance? We need to attend our classes. We need to go to the scriptures, go to the gurus, watch this video and others. If we knew everything, if we were omniscient like God, all-knowing, we would not need to do that. If we were everywhere, if we were all-pervading, why are we localized to the current spot where, for instance, I'm sitting or in this lifetime where we are and then moving to a different place after death? 
are we omnipresent? We're not. So these were three important words, and these you know kind of give the idea for the first three questions. And the fourth one, as Swamiji says, the souls are innumerable in quantity. God is one. God is unique, the supreme. Many, many different avatars, many, many different forms. But God is one. We souls are individually innumerable. We cannot be equivalent to God. So that refutes the ideas of the non-dualist philosophers. As a quick reminder, in the introduction to this chapter, chapter seven, we had introduced what Swamiji presents as these three words, which now you saw in the three questions, the first three today. So omniscience, omnipresence, and omnipotence. So reminder to go back to that. So then Swamiji progresses to the idea of a different school of thought, which is the dualist school of thought. Perhaps, you know, the souls, we souls, and God are completely different, completely separate. And that is how Swamiji motivates the discussion of the energetic and energy. At one point in time, at any time, we have God who is the energetic and he has his energy. We souls as part of that Jeev Shakti, that soul energy emanate from God. So as the concept of individual energetic and individual energy, yes, those are two different entities. The energy is different from the energetic, but who are we without the energetic? The energetic is the one that provides us that existence, that ability to be able to perform our activities. Like the sun provides sunlight, the energy needed to illuminate and to give energy to other sources. The you know, fire has its energies in the form of heat and light. The powerhouse, power grid example we've seen a few times, that provides electricity to be able to have appliances plugged in and turn on. All these are analogs to this whole concept or notion of the energetic and energy. And as we said, Maharajji has beautifully summarized this in Bhakti Shatak verse 42, Jiva Maya, Dui Shakti Hai, etc. At the very same time, there is this simultaneous, and as Swamiji says, inconceivable oneness and difference between the soul and God. And to help remind you about all that and appreciate more and more even the introduction to the book itself. So the introduction that we've talked about many times to Swamiji's own Holy Bhagavad Gita, we, rec we recommend you go back to the introduction and go specifically to the section commentaries on the Gita. That's where those various schools of thought had been briefly mentioned. And as I said, we said in class, this whole concept of Sampradaya, it all emanates from God. There is just one Sampradaya. And that is why, one of the reasons why Maharajji had been given these numerous accolades, and specifically the one we talked about also on Jagat Gurutam Divas, we mentioned Nikhil Darshan Samanvayacharya, the reconciler of the import of all the scriptures. Often you've heard Swamiji say that there are apparent contradictions in the scriptures. Keyword apparent. Maharajji was able to reconcile all those so-called contradictions. And as is given with the title, he was the reconciler of the import, of the meaning, of the purpose of all those scriptures. And hence he got that accolade. And that's why here today in chapter 7, verse 5, we appreciate that recognition, that honor for Maharajji even more. Because simultaneously, there is this whole notion of the energetic and energy as one, as well as as two different entities, God and the souls. As Mummy mentioned in class, Shaktiman and Shakti. So all that now, I think, helps us hopefully understand this idea of Jeev Shakti and that singular one Sampradaya, one whole school of thought from Sri Krishna himself. That is the takeaway for chapter 7, verse 5. Once again, sun and sunlight being the catchphrase. Let's see if we yeah. have any important Sanskrit words to learn and any other takeaways. Mommy, over to you. Um, your catchphrase, Gagan, sun and sunlight, that reminds me of an example Swamiji gives. Swamiji, when he visits people's home, and then he says, people say, Swamiji, come here and sit in the living room. Sun has come. And then, so what is it? Sun has come. Swamiji says, if sun really comes, we won't be able to survive, right? 
that is the energetic but his energy is coming through the sun rays and without that energy we cannot live sun is the most important thing so sun is one that sunlight pervades the whole entire solar system similarly god is one that pervades the all three worlds with his infinite powers okay so remember jeev tatva jeev tatva that is shakti and krishna tatva that is shakti man god is the supreme energetic and soul is the energy of god and i love this uh, verse 42 from bhakti shatak jeevu maya dui shakti hai shakti man bhagwan shaktin bhed abhed bhi shakti man te jaan so those apparent contradictions bhed hai and abhed hai. they are different and they are one so this is what we have to realize basically that we are fragments our individual soul is the fragment of that supreme soul we have some similarities but we are only a very 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 tiny anu at part of that supreme soul so slowly slowly we have to learn to move on this path of god realization to bhakti through bhakti bhakti and bhakti and try to achieve that happiness which our individual soul is all the time craving to get one with that supreme soul that's all i want to say lovely mummy i mean that whole example you gave swami ji has mentioned i do remember now and the sun has come that is something for all of us to keep in mind because it addresses everything that is in this verse over here indeed any other words that we need to take away or are we good on that front oh uh, just uh, apara that is inferior and prakritim that is energy so that is the inferior material energy but today here we have learned a very important word that is jeev shakti jeev shakti is the the soul energy the superior uh, sup- superior energy of god okay so just spiritual spiritual energy that is the jeev shakti that's about it wonderful yep so that is the entire essence for chapter 7 verse 5 and just a reminder when we meet next time which will be saturday march 18th 2023 please keep in mind that because of daylight saving time that is going to start later tonight in north america the timing will change for people from india asia most other countries that are not in the north american continent so please take note up on this slide right now next time when we meet saturday 18th march 2023 bhagavad gita study for instance in india you have been joining us at 7:30 pm it will be 6:30 pm for you next saturday onwards likewise bhagavad gita recitation when we meet next week again saturday 18th march 2023 it will be 9:30 pm india time that you will be joining us on uh, from so please do note that that is because of daylight saving time kicking in to the north america time zones later tonight saturday into sunday so next week onwards an hour earlier is the start time for most of you joining us from outside north america as always this slide that you're seeing on the screen and of course all the other slides the content everything is available through the jk yog community portal class page for this series if you're not already there yet you can take a look at this qr code and join us there it has all the weeks material week after week the slides this recap video that you're watching and other important reference material last comment is that we hope of course that very shortly after this many of you can join us at the radha krishna temple of dallas in person hopefully or otherwise online for phulu ki holi that mummy had talked about in class as well It will be a very very fun celebration and then of course followed by a wonderful concert and we're looking forward to that and hope that all of you can continue your journeys till then happy learning we shall see you next time again saturday 18 march 2023 
keeping note of the time zone that is appropriate for your location. Thank you. Radhe Radhe. Radhe Radhe.